Shalom, everybody, and I praise Yah for this blessed day. And I want to bring a message here to you today about uh, some videos I'm seeing online about people speaking against living according to Yahweh's guidelines and instructions is found in the first five books known as the Torah, rebuking the Lord, saying that uh, as, as they call themselves non-Jewish believers or Gentiles, they no longer need to follow the Torah. And I want to discuss this because uh, to the uneducated mind, they seem like they know what they're talking about. But in fact, uh, they're misleading a lot of people, and they're very misled themselves. So I wanted to discuss this. First, I want to discuss is why the need for them to come on here and speak against Torah. And I'm in agreement with them from this area, because there are some people that promote the Torah, uh, or we'll say the works of salvation. And I understand the desire for them to to let us know and not forget the blood of Yeshua, our wonderful Messiah, and not the works of, of what we do. It's by, by him and him only that we have our salvation. But they miss to understand the point that Yahweh gave us his guidelines and instructions, not only to bless us, to keep us safe, and to help us make the right choices and give a great example of who Yeshua is and how he wanted us to live our lives. The discussions from people that are on YouTube and, and online making videos that are rebuking people who desire to follow the guidelines and instructions are, 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 are weak and unscriptural. They're taking away through using a lot of names and ideas the essence of what our creator wanted to do. For he gave us the guidelines and instruction not as a law to do or not do but because he loves us and he wants to keep us uh, safe from danger. And there's direct connections in scriptures to obedience and blessings and direct connection to disobedience and curses. These people try to claim that the law, the guidelines and instructions, the Torah has been changed with the covenant of Yeshua and it is no longer valid. And I remind them and I remind everyone the instructions of our creator has not changed. The commandments have not changed. If anything, Yahshua, the one they called Jesus, signified them even more, making and raising the bar, not doing away with it. There was so important. He said he wants them to go off paper and onto our hearts. There was no change in the Sabbath or the idea of keeping the guidelines and instructions of our creator's calendar, that was not changed and that did not go away. As much as they want to try to explain through their, their thoughts of, uh, uh, and excuses to live in sin of why this should not be. They try to claim that all the Torah teachers out there are saying sin is living against the guidelines and instructions of our creator as, as found in, in 1 John, because that's what it says. But then they say, well, the... Torah wasn't given or the instructions weren't given of Moses weren't given until uh, later on in, in, in the first five books. So what about Abraham and what about Noah and what about Adam and Eve? Did they sin? If there was no Torah, how could there have been sin? They try to justify their disobedience and they try to excuse everything saying we're not Jewish. That's not for us or we're not Israel. Folks, people that are saying things like that might have a, a pure desire to, to focus on the grace of Yeshua. I don't know their motives, but I do know that our creator gave us his guidelines and instructions to bless us. To bless us. And the Torah is the first five books of the scriptures. And Yahweh made up the Torah, not Moses. They're not the guidelines and instructions or laws of Moses. They're from our wonderful creator. And he gave us them from the beginning of time. And yes, he explained them more clearly through Moses and told us how to do it. And his desire was for man to live a certain way and to not need a priesthood. His desire was for us 
to go directly to him without a Levitical priesthood or anyone getting between us and him. It was because man's hard heart that Yahweh had to uh, create this uh, group for us to go through. It was because of Yahweh's uh, grace and blessings on us. He gives us what we wanted, but it's with his grace and blessings that Yeshua is there for us. And we can go directly to him today and praise Yah for the new covenant that we can do that. But we have to understand his word. It's not just that had to show us what right or wrong is. Yahweh's desire is for us to follow him just like any father wants his child to follow him. And they want to get into scriptures of how do you explain this? And what about this? And they want to drag people in this. And, and I admit there are some people in the Torah movement that, that talk about the work salvation. I remind everyone, Yeshua didn't die so we have an excuse to live in sin. But at the same hand, we don't do the works because we have to. We should be doing it because we love Yahshua and we want to. Yahshua says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And they tried to explain it away saying that Yeshua's commandments are different than Yahweh's commandments. They don't understand, apparently, that Yeshua is Yahweh and they weren't changed. And they say, well, where in the New Covenant was it discussing things like the Sabbath day and the feast days? It was in their actions. Yeshua taught, and all the people back then, including the followers of Yeshua, the apostles, followed the Sabbath, the guidelines and instructions. And even after Yeshua descended, they still kept them and followed them because that's what they were taught to do by Yeshua. For none of that has changed. What changed was the location of the Torah from paper onto our hearts, where we knew it and lived it automatically. We didn't have to read it or hear it from some priest. We need to get this and understand this because uh, they're, they're, they're leading people astray and they're, they're, they're giving people uh, the wrong idea, the wrong message. And then my question goes is, what is their exact agenda? What is their exact agenda? Because they tell people that there's no such thing as, as work salvation. But that doesn't take away the idea of being blessed by being obedient to our wonderful creator. Why would anyone not want to follow the guidelines and instructions of our creator? And I ask them that, but they don't want to answer that. Or they want to make up excuses that that's not for us. Yes, the guidelines and instructions of our creator are for everyone out there. And if you're listening right now, understand that Gentile does not just mean not Jewish. Gentile means heathen. Gentile means uh, uh, heathen or, or the nations uh, or the disobedient. And then when you become a believer in Yahweh, you now become the commonwealth of Israel. And these instructions are spoken to you to follow these. Since the beginning of time, Yahweh gave Adam guidelines and instructions to follow. And to this very day, that's never changed. It's never changed. It couldn't be more clear as Moses clarified it up in the scriptures and told us what to do, how to live it, and how to follow it. And then we have Yeshua living it out and showing us and directly showing us how to do, what to do, and how to follow it. People talk about the law of Moses, the law of Moses. There's no such thing as the law of Moses. Moses was a, a messenger of Yahweh. And it's the guidelines and instructions of our creator that Yahweh used to give it to the people. But the people weren't getting it. And then Yahweh himself sent part of him, his Yahshua, his salvation part of us, of, of Yahweh sent him to us to literally show the people of how it must be done and how we can understand what it means to be repentant and to come back. We have to get this and understand this 
as they continue to try to make excuses and live according to the wickedness of the world and pick and choose which commandments we can follow or don't have to follow. The scriptures are clear. There's, there's, there's so many commandments out there. We can't follow all of them today for certain reasons. And those are the ones that we, 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 we can't do. But we should be doing all the ones we can do. And we hear the word commandment or law and we think it's such a, a, a religion-based thing. But if we just understood and looked at it as a guideline and instructions from a father, a heavenly father, maybe we would think about it different. But just like young children who are so uh, far away from their parents and an understanding of what their parents want to do, just like uh, young teenagers who think that they know it all and they know best, just like young men that will not listen to the wise leaders and just like in scriptures, the young kings that got themselves in trouble because they didn't take the counsel of the older men, they took the counsel of the young men and got themselves in trouble. Yahweh wants us to follow wisdom. That will add years to your life. The fear of Yahweh. Yahweh wants us to follow wisdom. This is what all the Psalms and the Proverbs were about. We have to understand there's a right way and a wrong way to live our lives. We have to get that. And, and I'm afraid that people aren't getting that in the church. And they're teaching the wrong message. And to come against Yahweh's instruction. I'm okay with people saying this is a, a, a work salvation and we're against the work salvation. But that does not do away with the works and the importance of the works. When it comes to somebody's salvation, that's between Yahweh and them. And I do believe part of that judgment is going to be based on how their lives are. Uh, were were lived out however that's not our decision or even our judgment to make we have to understand is that yeshua loves us and he gave us everything we need and nothing has changed and for those that say or come against the oral torah of the Judaism and all this stuff. I'm not talking about Judaism and I'm not talking about Christianity. I'm talking about the word. And if we read the word and we understand what the word says from the beginning, this is a book that our father left us to bless us. I know a man that had pancreatic cancer. Well, I don't know him, but I, I seen him on television and he was going to die. And before he died, he made a book for his children to give them lessons in life, to leave them with lessons that he's learned before he died. He knew he was going to die. And he left them with important messages that he felt they needed to bless their lives. He ended up dying. I don't know what happened to children or the book, but if those children were wise, they would understand that there's no person, there's no person in this world that probably cared for them except their mother, maybe more than their father or as much as their father. And he wanted them to be blessed by those instructions and for them to not read it, for them to ignore it, or for them to make excuses why they don't have to follow it. It's such a tragedy. Well, this is what we have today when our heavenly father gave us his guidelines and instructions, gave us the books for us to follow, to be blessed. And people ignore it. And people don't want to follow it. And people want to talk against it it's not difficult and as yeshua raised the bar he also said my yoke is not difficult my yoke is easy he said and a yoke is it's it's it, we hear that but the, how many of you actually know what it is a yoke is something that's tied around the neck and it weighs us down and he said no that is not going to weigh us down we're not going to let that weigh us down. My yoke is easy, he says. He doesn't release us from the guidelines and instructions. His instructions are no different than what's found in Torah. 
people are, are being so misled. And I pray people uh, figure this out and get this right because uh, there's so many, so much deception out there by the by the church and online and people jumping on the the bandwagon and just trying to uh, feel good about living in sin. That has to change, folks. It has to change. So, if those of you that are listening right now have never uh, right. understood or heard this, or or, or you can't figure out or you're being deceived by the church or, or one of these messages, I pray that your eyes are open and I invite you just go look at the scriptures. Go look at the scriptures. How could Abraham and how could Noah have sinned if the Torah wasn't there yet? What is sin? That's the question that many of the Hebrew teachers proclaim. What is sin? According to 1 John 3, 2, I believe it is, Sin is transgression of the Torah, transgression of the law. And then they say, well, the law was given with Moses. No, sin is disobedience to our wonderful creator. And his guidelines and instructions came way before Moses wrote down the Torah. His guidelines and instructions came from the beginning of time. And yes, Adam and Eve disobeyed our creator and suffered for it. And yes, Ham. Uh, uh, you know, in Noah's tent, uh, created uh, a great disobedience to Yahweh when he uncovered his father's nakedness. And we see the consequences of sin, the consequence of disobedience. We have to understand this and we have to get this right. Yahweh says, I take no pleasure in the death of wicked people. I only want them to change from their wicked ways so they would live. What is wickedness? What is wickedness according to our creator? And if our life is on the line, what does that mean? What does that mean? And it's not a physical life he's talking about because we're all going to physically die. He's talking about a spiritual life. A spiritual life. I only want them to change from their, their, their ways so they would live, so they would have life. One of the questions they propose in their videos about coming against the Yah's instructions is, is Yahshua the walking Torah? That's one of the titles to one of the, is Yahshua the walking Torah? Yeshua perfectly carried out the guidelines and instructions of Yahweh because he is Yahweh. You have Yahweh the Father and Yahweh the Son and he carried them out perfectly and he taught them perfectly and he didn't change them anywhere. We want to use the words, or we use the words Torah, and we think Judaism, the oral Torah, the written Torah, and all of this. It comes down to obedience and your heart. Where is your heart? And I ask you again, why wouldn't you want to follow the guidelines and instructions of our creator? Because you don't understand them? Why wouldn't you want to follow our creator's holy calendar day, his holy times, and his, his Sabbath days? And in those moments where you can't, do you completely destroy them and go to the, 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 the pagan holidays and rituals of the world? Why wouldn't you want to come close to following them? The Sabbath day is not done away with, and it's way before Moses gave the written Torah and the fourth commandment to keep the Sabbath holy. It was established at the beginning of time. Why wouldn't you want to keep that? And then you have the beauty of the holy feast days of our wonderful creator, which cannot even be kept according to the guidelines and instructions of our creator, but the beauty of the heart of the desire of those people who want to remember it and, and celebrate it and practice it. So when it can be kept, we will go back to that and understand that and open that up. The beauty of that, instead of running away from it and going to pagan holidays, they do the best possible to desire to stick with it. Hallelujah. And that's what he wants us to do. And that's the difference between those lazy, weak excuses of people that want to talk away Yahweh's obedience to those who desire to follow it no matter what. Is following his guidelines and instructions, our obedience to him, a salvation issue? It is not for us to decide somebody's salvation. It is us 
to share the gospel of Yeshua and to warn others of the danger they put themselves in. We have to get something right and understand something. There's, when we talk about life and death, there's a physical life and there's a spiritual life. And there's also a timing of life. And the scriptures are very clear based on how a person lives, based on how a person lives, the timing of their physical life can end much sooner than Yahweh had planned. As it says in the scriptures, a wicked man will die before his time. And there are scriptures that also say a righteous person who repents can add years to his life. And we look at King Hezekiah as an example, who was on his last breath, his last breath, and he repented to Yahweh for his wickedness, and Yahweh added 15 years to his life. So there's the physical life, and then there's the spiritual life. We got to get this. We're all going to die physically. We're all going to die physically. If we die earlier or later, that's the blessing and the curse. That's the blessing for obedience versus the curse for disobedience. Is how long of a physical life we have. That's what we get. Yeshua. This is something that people need to clarify and understand. The physical life is based on blessings and curses. You're going to die no matter how righteous you are physically. But if Yeshua died for the penalty, the death penalty, the penalty of death, why do we still die? Yeshua died for our spiritual life. Yeshua died for our spiritual salvation. That's why Yeshua died for us. We're all going to pay the penalty of death eventually that he's supposed to be taken away through our physical death. But we have to look at this from the right standpoint. Yeshua didn't take away or even postpone the penalty of death for disobedience in our lives. For disobedience, people are still going to die before their time. They're the consequences of our actions. That the Torah, the instructions, the guidelines try to, try to save us from suffering and dying before our time and being blessed with a good long life. That's what the word says. You'll be blessed with a good long life. Shua died for our spiritual life. For our spiritual life. That's what we have to get. That's what we have to understand. When he says, I take no pleasure in the death of wicked people, I only want them to change from their wicked ways so they would live, they would have a life. And then when we think about there's a way before each person that seems right but ends in death, we're all going to die physically, but we're talking about the spiritual life. And what Yeshua did for us, taking away the penalty of our spiritual death so we have that opportunity. And when we're presented with that opportunity where every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Yeshua is Messiah, and understand what he truly did for us. The value of our physical life is only based on our obedience to our creator's guidelines and instructions. But what he did was much higher. Our everlasting life with the Father. That's what Yeshua did for us. But we need to accept that. We need to accept that and believe that and understand that. That's what accepting Yeshua is about. That's what accepting Yeshua is about. If we say we believe in him, regardless, regardless of how our works look to the world or what we're doing to the world, or the consequences we suffer on a physical death, there's going to be a time. There's going to be a time where there's going to be a question of, what we truly believe. And we can't hide 
a heart from Yahweh. He knows our heart. So we have to make that decision. We have to understand that. We have to understand the importance of, uh, of, of what Yeshua did for us. When we get into words like law and sin and grace and mercy, and we understand a penalty of, 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 of the things of, of scripture, we understand the penalty of, of what it means to, uh, or, or the consequences of scripture. We don't even say penalty, the consequences of, 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 of a disobedience is death. It's a physical death, but we're all gonna die, but it's dying before your time. And all so many Proverbs, which is the wisdom of Yah, tells us a righteous man will live to a great old ripe age. Hallelujah. But you're still going to die. You're still going to die. Remember, there were two trees in the garden, the tree of knowledge and the tree of life and death. Yeshua, we could look at. We could look at Yeshua as the tree of life and death. But not a physical death, a spiritual death. Yeshua is that tree. Yeshua is the tree that gives us the eternal life to be with Yah. Yeshua is that tree of life. Doesn't matter if you believe in Yeshua physically, you're still going to die. But spiritually, but spiritually, hallelujah, is what he did for us. Such an important thing that so many people miss. Father, I just pray for those people out here that, that don't get this message. Father, and try to excuse your, your physical instructions for our lives and will suffer the consequence of death way before their time and suffering in their life and all the harm in their life. Father, I pray people come to understand the significance of what Yeshua did for us and taking the the spiritual consequences of our eternal life and take a nap for us, Father, and for people to truly get an understanding of what it means to not have a spiritual life with you. And I've done videos on this in the past. To not have a spiritual life or, 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 or an eternal life with Yah. The separation it puts from you, Yahweh. And that's what Yeshua did for us. That's what he did for us when he took our disobedience and through his grace and mercy, through his grace and mercy, while he was being hung on a cross for us, until he descended, the separation for that short time, the true separation, not only the physical separation, but the true separation from you, he took that away for us, for those that believe in him. This is, is, is what we have to get. Yeshua is the part of Yahweh, the salvation part of Yahweh that came for us. As Yeshua was here in a human form, he had a complete connection to Yahweh because he was Yahweh, Yahweh the son. And here he is, and the spiritual death the, the cut off from, from our eternal life with him was taken, was, was what he died for and what he went through for us and the agony he went through us. It's not a physical death, it's a physical death. It's a spiritual death. The separation from Yahweh for all eternity, which he saves us from. That's what he saves us from. We have to get this. We have to understand this. And praise Yah, I pray that you all do. I pray that you all do. May you follow his guidelines and be blessed. May you have peace in your trials and may you suffer well. But you may take joy in knowing what Yeshua truly did for us. What he did for us. May your prayers be lifted up. Those prayers for those people that are suffering the consequences of Yah's word. 
that they would get right with his word and feel and, and his healing touch and feel what he truly wanted from us and how he truly wanted us to live. But the most important thing are the circumcised hearts. And may people come to know in truth, his holy word, his desire, what he wants for us to acknowledge and accept Yahshua for who he is and to understand what he truly did for us. For if Yeshua knew he was going to raise physically, what's significant is a physical death. If he knew he was going to raise physically, what's significant was the, the physical death. But for Yeshua to die spiritually for us and separate himself completely in every way from Yahweh for that short time, and take that for us and then descend to be back with Yahweh and give us that through his grace and mercy. Hallelujah. That we may have physical, a spiritual life and everlasting life with Yahweh. So I pray for those that are giving these messages against Torah. And I also pray for wisdom and understanding to, uh, for Yeshua. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for this blessed day. May you all be blessed today. May you all desire to get back to his word, no matter who you are, where you are. May Yahweh be with you. Praise Yah in the name of Yeshua. Shalom, shalom.